Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. Today we've got an exciting tutorial. We're going to be talking about the immutable ledger property of blockchains. All right, so here's our map. And previously we spoke about hash cryptography and so we can check that off. And today moving on to the immutable ledger. So what is uh, the immutable ledger? Well, to start off, let's have a look at where we left off last time. This is where we left off. We discussed that in a blockchain blocks are uh, cryptographically linked together and that's where the chain is actually formed and we discussed how that works. So today let's look at an example. Let's say you want to go and buy a house and so you have money, might be a pile of cash or most likely just money in the bank um, and then you take that money and you go and pay for your dream home. So what do you get in exchange? In exchange you actually get the home but how do you know that you have the home? How do, how can you prove to someone else that that's your home? How, like, why can't you just go up to any house on the street and say that that's your home? Well, because in exchange for that money, what you get is a deed, a title deed to the house. And whoever has the deed is the owner of the home. So what you need to do with that deed is you need to uh, take it to a government authority, such as a local council or the city council or some other authority, the, the name might differ. So there it is. You take the deed there and you register your ownership. You show them the deed and you say, this is now my house. I paid money for it and I would like to register that it is my home. So that's a, like a simplified explanation of what happens. I'm not an expert in property. So there might be some experts listening to this and <laughs> might be laughing at how simple this is. But the, this uh, drives the point home. You need to register your ownership with the lo local authority. And so how do they register it? Well, usually they write it down in, in a ledger. Not usually, they always write it down in a ledger. And in some cases, some um, modern governments, more modern governments, they use digital ledgers. But the interesting thing is, and I was very surprised to learn this myself, that still a huge percentage of governments, especially in the, um, not in like not in the first world countries, in third world countries, they still use um, written ledgers, so actual physical books. And in fact, not not just in third world countries, even even in first world countries, in many cases, it's still a physical book, like a, a notepad with enumerated pages, where people just write down who owns what and then when it's, once it runs out they put it into the archives they get a new one and then they start a new page and so on um, and so as you can imagine this this is it this is all you have you have, <laughs> you have the title deed which you know you you need to hope to keep safe that you won't lose it or you won't it won't burn somewhere um, and you have this little tiny entry in a book somewhere in a building that belongs to the government where it says you own the house. What if that building burns down? Or what if somebody steals that book? Or what if somebody wants to come along and hack that book? And we don't even have to use the word hack because it's a book. They just go in and they rip out the page and they glue in a different page where everything's the same except for your entry, which they changed. And then what does that mean? Well, that means that all of a sudden you don't have the house anymore. Like physically, you might still be living in the house and you might think it's yours, but in reality, in just because that one line of information has been erased from a book somewhere in the government authority, um, all of a sudden you don't actually have the house. And it's, even if it's not a book, even if it's an electronic document, like an Excel spreadsheet, how difficult is it for somebody to go into an Excel spreadsheet and just change one line? So it's very easy still, right? So, um, and in fact, a lot of people actually live like that a lot like there are tons and tons of errors in um, property title ti uh, property titles in uh, like in these databases and people live in their home they think they have the home but in reality it's actually not theirs anymore just because of some error or some somebody messing up with the files so now comes in technology comes in blockchain how can we fix this situation well, let's say we have um, all of these titles stored in a blockchain rather than on the paper or in an Excel spreadsheet or in a database. 
let's say we have them. So every single title, every time somebody buys something or sells a house, it's a new block that's added to this chain. And it's even okay, it's, we're not even talking about distributed, decentralized yet. This whole blockchain can be stored um, like very simplistically like in that government facility. Even that's already better. And so every time you can see like we've already, there's already been some transactions in this blockchain and then it's your turn, you buy your house um, and that, so you add a new transaction. And then a couple of man months pass by or a couple of years pass by and then somebody comes along and decides to take your home away from you by um, tampering with the data in the blockchain. They also really like that home and they want to uh, rip out that page of the book, but they get into the uh, facility and they see that it's actually not a book, it's a whole blockchain. Okay, so that's, you know, that's a challenge, but might be solvable. But what's happened in those past couple of months or uh, years is that more property transactions have happened. So people bought properties or sold properties, and all of those were also recorded in the ledger. And now, so if this uh, person tries to tamper with the data in that specific block, then what happens is that will change the hash of this block. And what that means is this cryptographic link will no longer work because the hash here is different to the hash recorded here for the previous block. So remember we have the previous hash here, the field previous hash, it will no longer match this one. So this person would have to change this block as well. But as soon as they change this block, this block won't match this one. And they would have to change this one as well. And as soon as they change it, this one won't match this one and so on. So because of this cryptographic link, as soon as they change one block, all of the blocks after that will no longer be valid. They will no longer be connected to the chain. And it'll be very easy to tell and very hard for the person to tamper with all the records. So unlike in the book where they can just change one entry here, they would have to change the, all of the entries following yours. And that's what we mean when we say that it's an immutable ledger because you cannot change data. As soon as data has gone into the blockchain, it's very, very difficult. Like at this stage, we can see it's very difficult. And that's when we just have the blockchain stored in this government authority. Once we talk about peer-to-peer -peer distributed networks, you'll see that it's practically impossible to change a single uh, block in the chain simply because the, the way it's structured because more and more uh, components are added. So the longer, the more time passes, the harder it becomes uh, to change and eventually becomes practically impossible. Um, okay, and so that's what an immutable ledger is. And I also wanted to point out here that this is not just an example pulled out of air. This is one of the biggest uh, quoted examples. Uh, property ledgers is one of the biggest qu uh, quoted examples when people talk about blockchain outside of finance, outside of uh, Bitcoin, outside of other coins and cr cryptocurrencies and uh, ICOs and things like that. Why is it such a big example? Well, um, to start off with this whole problem of ledgers, right? That these ledgers are so like archaic, it's so unreliable to keep information there. Um, and here's some other fun facts. For example, uh, remember in the financial crisis that we had in 2008, well, Bank of America was going to uh, places to like, you know, close um, mortgages for to foreclosures and uh, because this is so unreliable they actually ended up coming to properties where they didn't actually have a mortgage they hadn't made a mortgage given a mortgage to the person or the the business for that property and they tried to foreclose properties which they had no right to foreclose simply because how bad these ledgers are another example is in Hai in Haiti or Tai Tahiti um, well, basically, in, in Tahiti, it's practically impossible to know whose property you're living on, who, pro, which property belongs to who, because um, of uh, all of the natural disasters they have there, like all of these hurricanes that come through and, uh, you know, just wipe out not just the properties, but like the government facilities and all of these ledgers, unfortunately, get destroyed. And so it's, it's really impossible to tell for many properties, who it actually belongs to, what the historical transactions were of that. And plus on top of that, like with any uh, government, there can be corruption, there can be um, other factors that influence that. And so it's it became, it's become a huge problem there. Um, another example is that 
Um, the World Bank estimates that about 70% of the population of the world don't have access to proper um, titlements, to proper facilities that can register titles and title deeds. And that's mostly, of course, in um, third world countries. Uh, but still, that's that's a huge problem. That's a problem that blockchain can solve, that this new technology can solve. And to finish off, I wanted to give you one example, one more example. This is... Uh, an example from the UK, so directly from the government of the UK website. This is how many transactions, so property, um, and this is not commercial property, this is uh, private property transactions that have, or residential property transactions that happen in the UK per month. So you can see there's a, there's the blue is the values and the red is the seasonally adjusted. So about 100,000 transactions per month happen in the UK. And I know what you'll say, you'll say, oh, what if these are like tiny transactions, you know, somebody paid, you know, 10 pounds here and there. Well, no, actually this data is for transactions that are 40,000 pounds or above only. So only the only anything that's about 40,000 pounds went into this data set. So as you can imagine, that's 100,000 transactions per month, which, what does that make it? That's, uh, that's uh, about 3,000, just over 3,000 transactions per day or 140 transactions per hour, or if you um, even divide it further, it's like one transaction every sec, every 30 seconds. So this tutorial has been going on for like almost 10 minutes, I'm assuming. And so like in the time that we've been talking here, 20 transactions have happened in the UK for 40,000 pounds and above. So can you imagine like 3,000 transactions being recorded into these ledgers every single day? Inevitably, they are going to be errors somewhere. And that means, you know, people's title deeds, titles are not going to be recorded properly and that can cause issues down the track. And that can all be solved with technology, with um, blockchain. And that's why governments are already considering um, moving things like their title deeds uh, management to blockchains. And I think that's one of the first places we'll see that happen. And it's not only about title deeds. This can also be applied to things like Diamonds, that's another big use case, you know, because with diamonds, you also need to track who bought it, where it came from, who sold it, and, and all the transactions related to it. So you can see what's happening. So like physical um, tracking of assets, wherever we are currently using ledgers, this uh, we can move to blockchains. So there we go. That's an immutable ledger. And those are the benefits, some use cases. Um, I've got a, a great article for you for today. Um, I really loved reading through this one. This is called The Blockchain Economy, A Beginner's Guide to Institutional Crypto Economics. It's got almost 10,000 claps on Medium, uh, so it's it's very popular. Have a look. I, I really enjoyed it. It talks about a lot of these things and how they can impact our economy and what this means for the future uh, of governments, future of society, and the things that we're going to be doing. So check it out. Uh, great article, and I uh, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then. Enjoy blockchains.